Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. There's a, there's a thing that goes around uh, and that talks about people who uh, mentally they can handle a lot of things that some people can't handle. And you wonder what the mind does and what it can perceive and receive. And, and I know I'm somebody that, li- that I listen to a lot of tapes. Um, sometimes people call it biofeedback. Some bi- people call it yoga. They call it a lot of things. But I don't usually find older people uh, who, including myself, who really are open for that. But when I heard that Arthur Oaken, who, of course, you know him. He's been on our show before. He is the founder of the Savon Global a company that uh, offers all sorts of medication for you at great prices. You can really save so much. But today we're going to talk about something that he's experienced and that I've experienced, and maybe it'll help other people. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me, too. You you know, you always amaze me. You're so smart in so many areas. You write the most wonderful columns. You do so many things that um, a lot of people aren't capable of. And I know that it's your past life that you were in marketing, you were in research. Marketing research. Yeah, and I think that took a lot of brain power to do that. Well, it was a very interesting business to be in. It's a, You have to be very uh, analytical in that particular case, and uh, it was a wonderful business. Unfortunately, uh, leading up to what we're talking about, I, I came down with Lyme disease about 21 years ago. What, how did you do that? Were you out in the woods? Uh, well, I lived in uh, an area that was about 60 miles north and west of New York City, up in the foothills of the mountains. A lot of deer, a lot of bears, and uh, unfortunately, I got a deer tick, and that deer tick gave me uh, Lyme disease. And I went to the doctor complaining about bilateral problems in my shoulders, etc., and he immediately gave me a Lyme disease test and says tested positive. He did it a second time. I tested positive and he put me on a a regimen to get rid of the Lyme disease. And, uh, two months later, I no longer had the Lyme disease and Lyme disease was pretty new at that time. Yes. But none of my symptoms went away. And all, and the majority of my symptoms were fibromyalgia. And, uh, back then also fibromyalgia was pretty new. Yes, a lot of people had it, and, and the doctor said, "Oh, it's just in your imagination." I remember that. And it, it was a it was it was a horror show for me, because uh, not only I had uh, tendonitis through my whole upper body, I had uh, migraines, I had uh, multiple headaches, I couldn't fall asleep, I was having uh, panic attacks, I was depressed, I was I was having heavy anxiety. Uh, it just like put me knocked me out for a loop. I tried to work from my home because I couldn't drive, and I realized that I couldn't even work from my house because I couldn't concentrate, I couldn't read books, and the doctors didn't really have much of a regimen for pain medication. They put me on some uh, antidepressants, some uh, anxiety medications, uh, but they didn't help. and finally, one of my doctors, I, who I was getting migraines, and I, I just couldn't get rid of them, and he suggested that I do something called biofeedback. And back then, biofeedback was really trying to teach you how to warm up your hands, which would open up the blood vessels, and it would help get rid of the migraines. Uh, but I went to a biofeedback... Uh, institute, or, probably. Institute, yes. Right. I think and that the astronauts, that's where I remember now, biofeedback was something very scientific at, at when it first well, came out. it actually was something, I think they called it neurofeedback feedback then, and they attached me to a machine, uh, put all kinds of, of uh, gimmicks on my head, on my pulse, on my breathing. Yeah, it was tape. They taped things which then yes, went into, I remember they had, that. And they had me watching a machine. And the whole idea... Uh, originally was for you to stop using your active mind, the one that you do your calculations and your thinking, and get into your emotional side of your brain. And when you were able to do that, you can actually move uh, a balloon over a building 
and then onto the other side. And that was, that was teaching me relaxation. And uh, for my particular one, it was I am safe. And uh, I did two weeks of this. That's all the insurance covered. And uh, they said, you know what? You would be a perfect candidate for self-healing. And uh, they proceeded to give me two more weeks of training. They were nice enough to say, we'll only charge you what the difference would have been had we received your copay. And I learned self-healing. And that self-healing, I got to tell you, changed my life. Uh, I was able to uh, relax almost on, on a moment's notice, did my, my thing about uh, relax, relax one, relax two, relax three. I was going to say, you counted down from 10 and you... And it's all in the breathing. You breathe through your mouth, in, and you, and you exhale. No, you breathe in through your nose and you exhale through your mouth. And it, while you're doing that, you're envisioning uh, s- motion or strength coming through your hands and through your, through your arms. And you can actually feel the sensation as you're breathing of, of, of it going through your hands. And at that point, you can, I then was able to, if I was having a migraine, I would envision this, it, the energy coming through my left arm, put my hand up to where the migraine was, and I would say heal, and within a minute or two, my migraine was gone. I did that with pain and that I was having in my shoulders and my biceps on my chest. Uh, you couldn't stop it from coming back, but you could get rid of the pain, and I underst- And then they were telling me that you can then do envisioning uh, color. If you have a pain in a specific area, cancer patients, if you have a pain in a, a specific area, you, you envision it as white. And then in your uh, training, you then envision that you're changing the white to dark, and the pain goes away. That's, that's really fascinating, isn't it? Is it, it, it it's, I have to tell you, it was the most, it, it saved my life. Obviously, uh, it saved your life. And now biofeedback is very common. You know that. People do it for many things. I did biofeedback, and I'll tell you about that, but something that when you were talking, I actually took a Silva mind control course for six months, and it was much bigger than what you talked about, but it also gave me the power that when I'm into my, that consciousness, you get into another level down, I could actually walk through windows, doors, and go up and fly. Yeah, and because... Me too. See, that's it. It's interesting. I do tell that to some people. Because what it's done is using something that we don't use, and we should. We have a very powerful brain, but we're so conscious here all the time. We don't get out in other places. But I remember when when I did actually, going back to biofeedback, I was having, uh, they did it for the, to teach me how to do good Kegel exercises, because you never know how it, how you're doing it. But I would look at a screen and when I would do it correctly, the screen would do a certain thing. And like so, I did, yes. Exactly. So, it's, I mean, I, it's such a coincidence you should talk about this. It was, but then it was called neurofeedback. But they've made right. gigantic strides. Of course. Strides. But the biofeedback is so important now because so many people, they don't want to be on drugs. And they don't have to be on drugs, even though I know you do sell medication. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about people doing the power within them. Now, there are people, Arthur, that you know that have serious um, uh, migraines, really serious. And they've tried everything. They're even t- putting Botox. You know that. They're doing so many things. So if they could go and find a biofeedback organization, and I don't have any that I know of, but nor I think I, I'm... Nor I. In well, fact, you know I wrote what? that in my last article. Well, I, didn't I know. know that. I, I think I'm going to... There are a couple of doctors who I may be doing it, and I don't know that. But we ought to really look at that, because I think you're right. It's a God saving um, the 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 the, the thing movement. that it does most is uh, my worst enemy was stress, and uh, the biofeedback immediately brought down my stress levels. It brought down my blood pressure. The uh, PhD who was running it said you can actually go off your blood pressure medication if you if you constantly do that. And my cardiologist says no way. He says I want it constant. I don't want it up and down like a yo yo. 
But you were talking about uh, your, your, you're actually feeling that you're leaving your body. Yeah. I actually felt myself flying over right. myself and looking down. Exactly. And uh, and it, it was amazing. I found also that uh, Celtic music, if I had, if I, if I played Celtic music when I was doing my training. It brought it in. It, it helped it much faster. I used the part of the soundtrack from uh, Titanic. <laughs> uh, that is amazing. The, the Celtic part of it. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, while I was doing it, and this is funny, uh, when the Titanic sinks and they're playing the music there, my blood pressure uh, <laughs> dropped so much <laughs> that they said, don't use this particular one anymore because I was bringing, I was like, I was I, I had just brought my blood pressure so low. Isn't that amazing? So but if you low. have if you have uh, if you have tendencies of having stress, uh, the biofeedback is wonderful. Uh, but I can literally just stand in a place or sit in a car. I'll tell my wife go into the restaurant. I'll get rid of this pain or this headache. And a minute later, I walk in. I said it's gone, and she looks at me like like, what did you do? Yes. I actually at one time uh, I, I had one. Uh, I'm talking 21 years ago. Uh, I had a grandchild that was crying hysterically, and it was getting me. I was holding her, and I couldn't. I, and I was having trouble handling it. So I started doing my biofeedback while I was holding her, and not only did I get better, but she stopped crying. Now isn't and I don't that know. I, and I don't. And I'd have. I'm saying to myself. Did I do that? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I, there are there is what they call reku or reku, where they, yeah, the reku, people right. who, where they 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 pass the hands yes, over you. Yes. But I don't know whether I did that or not. But as far as I'm concerned, biofeedback and your ability to do self healing is amazing. If you can reach that level, that's right. It does take training, and I know people are listening to us. And the next thing I know, I'm going to get some calls where do i go for biofeedback so i better start investigating now because i know people are going to want to do this uh the people who are doing who did it with you were they physicians or were they scientists or what no were no they? it was a phd it was a phd uh, she was and she had a facility where she had uh, biofeedback uh, trainers uh and she had quite a quite a setup and uh and they and they were pro, and they were measuring my my progress. They were actually watching my hands get warmer. Uh, they would actually they were every time they would attach these uh, th- these units to my brain, they would see that I was I was I was actually shifting into my 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 emotional side. And uh, once I learned that I can control my emotions, and that I can do I can go into my uh, into my well, my mon- I call it a mantra, but I, I but it's for me. I could do it within a minute. It's not like yoga. It's similar to no, yoga. It's not like that. No, uh, I know. And it's also very similar to. Uh, well, I, I will. I'm going to really now go further with the. So you should look up silver mind control. I took that about in 1972, and I did that for six months, and it changed my life because this goes into. Um, it, it teaches you about a body. You learn anatomy. You learn about the universe, about astronomy, and then you have to be able to take all that to put it together. And the end of the course, when you graduate, and you could have gone on for more courses, you actually get to experience someone in the group that knows of someone that has a serious disease, cancer or something, and without without anything else, you, you put your hand in front of you and you go down on that person it's not the person it's someone they know they put a little slip of paper in what it is go down and your hand stops at the area that's cancer no i I, I know that but i'm saying i didn't do that i know that but i that's why i'm so into what you've said because i know what you're talking about has such power and if you go further you can do a lot more things you know i knew an astronaut uh, ed mitchell who along with other astronauts, were able to be in a room. I saw a video of this, and then there were, you've probably heard about this, there were utensils over in another room, and they could all get their brain together and bend those utensils. And I saw this, so I know it's true because it's the power of the mind. I, I, this is beyond me. I know that, but it's the beginning, what you're talking about. What a lot I, of people couldn't even think about what you're talking well, about. What I'm, what I'm, we're talking two different levels 
I'm talking about a wonderful bio biofeedback, which for me for healing my pain. Uh, going beyond, and then I told you I didn't know whether I actually quieted my granddaughter or not. It could have been just that I was breathing very quietly at the time and trying to bring down the anxiety that I had because she was crying so heavily. And uh, but for me, it was the greatest experience that I that I could have had. It saved my life. And uh, by the way, just one thing to deviate slightly, I do get migraines about once a year. I can bring them down, but I can't stop them. And the next subject matter would be acupuncture because I go for acupuncture once a year. I go for two or three treatments, and I don't have migraines for a year. My daughter in, in Portland is an acupuncture physician. So oh. I do understand acupuncture, and yes, it's and and also I just left another my my uh, a granddaughter who is uh, who does the Reiki and but she does yoga and she also does a lot of these things so this is not hocus pocus no th this it's is amazing real. it's 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 real it's it is real. real you have to just you have to open up your mind yes uh, for me it was I want this because I didn't know what biofeedback was I didn't know what I was walking into uh, the doctor said that he knows patients he was a, a neurologist. He said, I, I, if you, maybe this will help you get rid of the migraines. He had no idea either. And when I walked in, I, they attached me up, and I, they said, do this, do that. And after like a few days, I said, what am I, what am I trying to accomplish? Yeah. They said, stop thinking. Stop thinking and just accept what we're saying to you. <laughs> and I said, can I talk to uh, Dr. So-and-so, who was the head? And she explained to me what the whole purpose was. The trainer, didn't, the trainer was just trying to tell me what I had it to do. And she explained to me what the purpose was of the biofeedback. And as soon as she explained that to me, I flew through that. They told me I was a week ahead of mostly everybody else at that point. So what did she say to you? Can you remember? She explained to me what biofeedback was. It was, it was a, able, the ability to control your emotions. And to, if you can control your emotions and, uh, and stop uh, your thinking process and just let your emotions take hold. Uh, he, she said you would be able to accomplish many things. You have, and after two days after that, they told me that I could start doing the self-healing. So that you didn't need to be there with the bio, with all those, that equipment? Well, no, no, the biofeedback, the self-healing at that point, they told me, uh, one, I could do it with touching the area with it. I could also do it with uh, visualization of uh, Visualization. I, if I have a migraine, I could visualize that as a yellow or, or a white, and then I can just visualize it disappearing. Now, see, I didn't know about that. That's very oh, yeah, interesting. yeah, I do that. Using and, I, colors. And, I, and I read up that uh, cancer patients uh, who have a specific pain area, uh, they do that with young children. Uh, they do it with other people that if they can envision uh, the pain uh, as, a, as a color and having it disappear. It was when I was envisioning the migraines is when all of a sudden I started looking down on myself <laughs> That's right. That I was, that was, I was actually scary, see, I was right? actually watching myself. <laughs> I love that. I was actually watching myself. Right. I had a time when they said, uh, "Think of of a uh, something that you want to be able to do," and I said, "I would like to be with my grandchild." My grandchild was in another nowhere near me, another state. I have six grandchildren. And I said, I want to envision something that I used to do with my father, and that was flying a kite, which, by the way, is one of the things that they try to teach you is to uh, reduce your emotions. You think of clouds, flying a kite, being at a beach with the water coming in and out, standing over a stream. Those are the things that calm you down. Yes. And I envisioned that, and I was with my grandson, and all of a sudden I became my grandson, and my father became me. Oh, that's fantastic. It oh, what like, a lovely thing. I mean, I was like, I was floored. It's, it's, the mind is capable of doing amazing things. Yes. And, uh, and, but just having to be able to do the self-healing. And uh, when, you have, uh, uh, when you have stress problems, when you have migraines, I had multiple headaches. I would have pain. Uh, fibromyalgia all through my upper body. Uh, it was, they told me that I could, 
I also came down with uh, tinnitus or tinnitus, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. And they thought that I, that's the one thing I couldn't control. That's the ringing in the ears. I could not get rid of know. it. I could not get rid of it. Now that's interesting. But they said you do. But biofeedback can lessen do it, that. not be as as bad. Did, was it able to keep? Well, it a once little... I well, it took years, but I, I'm in wearing hearing aids now, and well, they it, say hearing aids will reduce it. It reduces yes, it. It, yes, does. it yes, does. It does. It does. Uh, now, were you working at this time? I mean, in your business, or you no, were retired? I couldn't, I couldn't work. You at, really? I was. I. I. It would. You, I would. Uh, a client would come to me, and they'd say, "I want to find out if uh, this particular. If I do this cost reduction, whether people will notice it, and it would affect the product." So we went ahead, and, we, and I worked for all blue chip uh, uh, product manufacturers, and uh, and, and this was a six figure business uh, job. And I said to myself, you know what? I better give myself two weeks to write a report, which I used to take in two, three days. And I did the study. I got all the tabs. And I was working. I By that time, I, I had an office in my house. I couldn't travel to my office. I had to shut down the office. And uh, I wrote the report. And I got it out on time. And the next morning, I walked into my office. And I realized I sent my notes not the report, and I said, "That's it. I can't. I can't work anymore." And the killer was that I got calls for business after that, and I kept getting calls, and I kept getting calls. I had a three and a half million dollar business back then, twenty one years ago, and I had to give that whole thing up. But wait, but now you got the biofeedback. Were you able then to get back into it? Mm, Wasn't the same. No, it it, it was a it was a, the biofeedback probably came. Uh, a couple, maybe a year or two later, after trying all kinds of medications, uh, they were putting you on uh, uh, Elevil. Uh, I had to see a psychiatrist. I I was on medic. I, I was I saw a neurologist. I was going to a, a rheumatologist who handles uh, fibromyalgia. I was going through. I was going to all kinds of doctors. They were giving me all kinds of medications. Nothing worked. And then he said, you know, Arthur, about. 14, no, this happened about this happened about uh, about 14, 15 years ago. He says you got to get out of the cold weather. He said that's the worst thing in the world for the migraines. And that's was, what made you come down here. Uh, well, I originally had to live down here. I actually I graduated from the University of Miami. Go Hurricanes! <laughs> and uh, right. and I went back up north uh, when I graduated because there was no business back down here. And not like you're gonna in '61, no. right? I'm, I mean, I'm talking... That was New York stuff, right? Yeah, I went back... I actually went back to New York to reacquire my New York accent. <laughs> and uh, I met... Oh, my first job, I met a wonderful woman that we got married. And uh, it was it was in marketing research. And I worked for a number of large companies. And then I decided to go into business for myself. And I was able to grow a, a, a nice big business. I had a great reputation. Uh and uh, people would refer to, you know, a lot of business to me because I did some very special things. And then, lo and behold, uh, I got this deer tick. You know, I was wondering if other people who've had the same thing happen through Lyme's disease or something, uh, if this story was ever told. I think that, I hope that somebody, that some doctors or this biofeedback company, you know, did a lot of, uh, education on this because how many other people could be in the same situation as you were and yet didn't have that opportunity to know what to do well as i said to you the neurologist said i i i, I know of a company something called bi- i know of something called biofeedback where they where they do uh for migraines and back then the biofeedback was you learn to control and then to envision warmth going into your hand and as your hand got hotter, your blood vessels opened up, and the blood vessels and the brain would open up, and the migraine would go away. But that was the extent of it at that time, and that's all the doctor knew about. Well, for, I have to insert this. So in part of the training of the Silver Mind Control, you can look this up, uh, we were taught how to take... The, what they wanted you to do is, in case you saw an accident and someone needed to have a cold compress... You can make your hand like ice. And we went through this where we went into our alpha state and you could actually 
make your hand so cold you could hardly stand it, and then you could do it with your other hand so hot. I did all this. So I I'm, did the heat. Yeah, so you can understand. But I did the heat. But you did. See, it, see, so this is, you didn't know this about me, and I didn't know this about you. I did it not with biofeedback, but with a mental, this is what, he was an engineer, Silva, Jose Silva, and he had taught these courses. I tried to just recently go back again, but it's all online now. You could actually look it up. I'd like you to, because it's of something that I think you're interested in. I, I personally feel that if you have a trainer working with yeah, you, true. Uh, you can progress yes. much faster. Uh, I'm sure that's true. I've, I've, seen, I've seen all kinds of things on the uh, Internet. You know, according to the Internet, I have an IQ of 170 <laughs> because I can answer 10 questions. I mean, come on, I'm... <laughs> But it, it was, all right. Yeah, so it was wonderful that we, see, little did I know, little, I understand you so well. We didn't even rehearse this. This was just the way it was. So anyway, I'm, I'm so glad that you came here to talk about biofeedback. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Duffy didn't get to hear this. <laughs> That's right, Duff is, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll fill him in on it. Well, Duff's pretty, has a pretty strong mind. He's, he's learned to do some other kinds of things. But this is a very important thing. And I'm going to pledge to you, I'm going to look up where a biofeedback organization or some doctors who do this because I know that people will be calling me after they hear this show. And I will also, I, and when I wrote the article last month, yes, I started off, I finished off by saying is I don't know of any right. down here. So, but I'm sure they are and I'm going to look it up. But I wrote the article, I, I don't know if, if you, um, hopefully you read it. Oh, of course I read it. <laughs> that, of course I read it, but you didn't go into what you did with our talking about. Oh, no, 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 So, no. so I couldn't really hey, relate to that. Hey, I only had that. a limited time. I, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> but it was very true. Thank you, Arthur. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome.